Hi, Gary Steerman. It is the 30th of March. March is almost gone for this year, and uh, things are happening in Israel politically, and I wanted to focus on that today, on this Friday, March 30th. Uh, reading from Yediot Aharonot, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has congratulated uh, a man by the name of Shaul Mofaz on his win as leader of the Kadima Party. Uh, Prime Minister uh, congratulated the newly elected Kadima chairman the day after the primary victory and set up uh, meetings as part of a regular uh, opposition head session series. So uh, he's going to be meeting with uh, the head of the opposition party, Shaul Mofaz. Uh, the reason I mention this name is that I want you to be watching the news because I think that Shaul Mofaz, who has taken Tsipi Livni's place as head of the Kadima party, is going to become a political force in Israel. In fact, it's his goal, he says, to become Israel's next prime minister. He's a very liberal man, <clears throat> very pro-West, and uh, could change the political climate uh, in Israel rather, uh, rather severely. Uh, again, reading from uh, Yad Yad Aharonot News, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu congratulated newly elected Kadima Chairman Shaul Mofaz on winning the party's primaries. This is last Wednesday morning. The two agreed to meet as part of regular meetings between the Prime Minister and the opposition head, and Mofaz laid a wreath on Theodore Herzl's grave at Mount Herzl uh, as part of the ceremony of welcoming, and he was expected to visit the Western Wall. Uh, all of which he did last Wednesday. <clears throat> Sources close to Mofaz said that his first order of business will be to unite all of Kadima's members. Kadima, by the way, is the uh, uh, Israeli word, the Hebrew word that means forward, as in let's move forward. Uh, so uh, again, when you hear about Shaul, Mofaz, and the Kadima party, those thoughts should be uh, in your mind. <clears throat> If Zippy Livni, he said, if Zippy Livni wants the second spot, that won't be a problem, and she'll get it. She's just, she just has to say she wants it. Meanwhile, uh, Zippy Livni, the former head of Kadima, is stepping aside, and a lot of people say that it will be the end of her political career in Israel. So uh, I'm watching very carefully because uh, what this means is that Israel is slipping a bit to the left, a bit more than it has been. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu called on his rival and former Kadima chairman, Tsipi Livni, to stay in the party. And this is a quote from Netanyahu. He said, Tsipi, you belong with us. Well, uh, that's politics as usual. Mofaz slammed Netanyahu and outlined his social platform. Uh, three years of the Netanyahu administration have derailed Israel from its track. A strong and united Kadima will put Israel back on the right path. And he continued, we shall require that every boy and girl fulfill their obligation to the state, but we will ensure uh, that the right for a roof over one's head, education, dignity and family be available to all, Kadima will restore the working man's dignity. Well, <laughs> what can I say? Politics as usual. And he added, Kadima will again serve as a home for, those, uh, for all of those seeking the is Israel that was lost, the Israel we dreamed of. We shall win in the general elections and replace Netanyahu once and for all. Well, there you go. <clears throat> And uh, politics in Israel, like everywhere else, is, is quickening in this year. And I expect us to hear more from Shaul Mofaz in the coming weeks. Uh, meanwhile, from Debka file, we have this issued uh, March the 27th. Uh, Iran is flying thousands of pro-Palestinian activists into Syria which has caused the Israeli Defense Force to fortify its northern borders. And here's a quote, Israel boosted its Syrian and Lebanese border units as special flights carrying thousands of pro-Palestinian activists from Tehran touched down uh, in Damascus, that's Tuesday, March 27th, for the International Global March to Jerusalem, which will conclude Friday, 
March 30th, which is uh, today, the day we're making this. And of course, I haven't heard of the outcome uh, of that march yet. Before taking off, they were split into small groups and tutored by the Iranian Al-Quds brigades. Uh, these officers specialize in tactics for bre breaching Israeli, Israeli border barriers, bursting through and challenging the Israeli military forces defending the border. And so they are marching to penetrate Israel's northern border with the help of Iran. Uh, meanwhile, internally, Israel has just changed a part of its government. The, uh, the Kadima party has uh, uh, strengthened itself in its aim to overcome the Netanyahu majority. We shall see how that goes. The anti-Israeli activists from several countries are being planted at strategic points to carry out the plan hatched by Iran, Syria, and Hezbollah to ignite Israel's two northern borders in solidarity with the annual Israeli Arab Earth Day. And uh, apparently that is today as we speak. What can I tell you? We, uh, we, we are seeing some of the strangest things in the Middle East, uh, politics, we are seeing uh, half-executed uh, political gambits. We are seeing soldiers being flown in. We are seeing uh, rioters being killed in the streets. We are seeing Russians coming to aid Syrians. And now the Iranians flying in thousands of pro-Palestinian activists into Syria for the big march. <clears throat> and apparently that's taking place even as we speak today. And I, I think back, uh, as I always do, to Bible prophecy. Jeremiah <clears throat> 49, 23 has a note concerning Damascus. Hamath is uh, confounded, Arpad and Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings and they are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Damascus is waxed feeble and turneth herself to flee, and fear hath ceased upon her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. And you know, when I see that phrase, a woman in travail, <clears throat> I always think of the time of Jacob's trouble, which is described in that way relative to Israel. This, however, is relative to Damascus. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Therefore, her young men shall fall in her streets, and all the men of war... <clears throat> shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Well, of course, that's got to be a latter-day prophecy, because it has a number of phrases uh, that virtually always signal a latter-day prophetic fulfillment. And, and besides that, the palaces of Ben-Hadad have never been fully destroyed before. Neither has Damascus. But prophecy uh, calls, as we have said many times, for the latter-day destruction of Damascus. And here <clears throat> we have pro-Palestinian activists coming into Syria, acting in league with Bashar al-Assad's forces against the northern border of Israel. Just absolutely, in my opinion, tempting fate. And, and tempting their own downfall, uh, inviting their own downfall. Things happening here, there, everywhere, political and otherwise. And, of course, the Bible always has lots to say about, uh, about these events. Gary Stearman, you know, things are picking up speed, and we must remember to keep looking up.